Have you seated? Be well, turn in your handbooks to 13. We're singing all verses. sing verses 1, 2, and 4. books to 133.
preach for two weeks. <clears throat> so I could preach every song. Every song we've sang today, there's a there's a just a strong message in. But today, this song is just a prayer. It's just a prayer. And every word um, in it uh, is is written. Sandra wrote it for a purpose. But but the point is, we should sing it as a prayer. I worship you, oh my God, there's none like you. I worship you, oh Prince of Peace. That is what I want to do. You know what? How many of you feel like you want to worship? There's a few of you. Some people don't. No. No. You know what? Sometimes we're sad. Sometimes we're feeling like we've got a cold and we're feeling poor sometime but you know what right now just being here shows that you want to worship feelings have nothing to do with wanting actions so when you are sitting here and we sing this song and you say that is what I want to do you might not feel like it but you're actually doing it because you want to so you're saying that in full truth of the words written. I give you praise for you are my righteousness. I worship you, almighty God. There is none like you. That is our praise today. So we get to sing that again as individuals. Here we go. I worship you. book. Time for children's school. And Renee's going to be the teacher. Let's pray for her. Yeah. Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much for Renee. We pray that you will bless her as she instructs and trains these little ones for the future. In Christ's name, amen. amen. Can you do me a favor today? <coughs> if you have a Bible, you want to hold it up for me? Do you realize this is the only inspired book in our country? And there are countries that outlawed it and don't have them? 
Do you realize that this inspired book has always been the inspired book in our world and in the universe? It's God's message to us. So we appreciate having it, don't we? Amen. What a church this is. Amen. I mean, it's past noon and he hasn't even started preaching yet. <laughs> isn't, that, isn't that wonderful? That's great. Well, we have many blessings over here. Yes, we have. Amen. Well, the church I was pastoring for a while, they would have tarred and fared the day. Oh, yeah. for, was oh. this, I mean, if it wasn't out by five afternoon. Yeah. But the God's word pre- is. God's precious word to us, but his covenant with us. With us. Well, our scripture comes to us from Timothy, 2 Timothy, 2nd chapter, and. Uh, The Apostle Paul is the author, and he's giving us. We'd like to stand if you can. And uh, it's verse 15. And he says, Be diligent to present yourself approved to God as a workman who does not need to be ashamed, accurately handling the word of truth. Our Father, we thank you for the privilege we have to have this inspired book to us. And we thank you for the message that is coming from our pastor. We pray for him that he will speak boldly to us. And bless each individual here today in this service. But not only that, all of us have families and children and people that we know. We pray for a blessing to them. And we pray that this town will wake up and realize time is short. They need to make decisions for you. So we pray your Holy Spirit will work in a mighty way this day. In Christ's name we ask it. Amen. Amen. All right, so we are continuing our series on growth. We're we're continuing our series on growth. And remember, uh, we base that in Ephesians chapter 3, verses 17 through 19, where... You need water, Chris? That's all right. It's warm in here. Okay, let's pray for her. No, 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 don't be sorry. Let's pray for Nev right now, okay? Yep. I'm going to come right around with your head. Okay, nope, you're good. All right. Heavenly Father, right now we just pray for Neva, Lord. Um, Your scripture says, if there's any sick among you, let them call the elders. So we've done that, Lord. We've anointed with her oil. We've laid our hands on her. Lord, whatever's going on, we ask that you, you take care of it. Lord, we just look to you as our great physician, Lord. Bring her back into balance. Lord, be with her heart. Lord, be with her 
um, her system, Lord, just bring it back to you, into normal range, Lord. We just pray you touch her and heal her in the name of Jesus. Okay. <laughs> Blood pressure. Yep. Okay. All right. So growth. We've been talking about not only being um, uh, uh, educated in the word. We did a lot of educating last week, last year. We learned a lot about the spiritual gifts. We learned a lot about the, um, the proper um, worship. We learned a lot last year and now we're looking at growing. We want our roots to grow down deep into God's love. And, and though I've been kind of saving it for the end, we might as well see the end at the beginning. Trees who have their roots grown down deep stand the storms of life. Trees who have their roots shallow don't. They get blown over. They tip over. They die. We want our roots to grow down deep in God's love so that we can stand. It says so we can be made complete is what scripture says. And that's what our prayer is here. And I've been going through and I'm just suggesting there are six things that we can do to grow. Go to church, read the Bible, obey God's word. Witness, trust in the Lord, or trust the Holy Spirit will do a work within you, and then let the Holy Spirit empower you to do those things. And we're going to talk about each of those six things. Here two weeks ago, three weeks ago, we talked about going to church and do you guys remember? Now I'm, I'm putting a little on you. Putting a little on you. Do you remember why we should go to church? Anyone? I gave you four reasons. There's a thousand reasons not to go to church. I gave you four to go to church. Do you remember? Anybody? Give me one. Yes. Motivate each other to good deeds anyone else fellowship that is help uh we could say we are all god's family and we need to be together to learn to be a family fellowship anybody else there's two more frank said it earlier we use the gifts to help each other grow And then the last one, Frank also said, it's different. Corporate worship is different than individual worship. And Jesus promised it to be so. Where two or more are, two or three are gathered in my name, there I am in the midst of them. It's different. That's why we go to church. <clears throat> Two weeks ago, we started the R of growth. And we said there are three things about reading the Bible. First, we need to realize it's God's message to us, the message to us. And second, we should meditate on it. And third, we need to memorize it. Hide it in our heart. Meditating out of love for that message Memorizing it that we might not sin against thee to improve ourselves. Today, I want us to 
talk more about the honor of growth. <laughs> Read the Bible. Um, today, I want us to look at how, where two weeks ago, we kind of looked at why. All right? So I'm going to give you six ways how to read the Bible. Why would I do this? 2 Timothy 2.15, our opening text, Brother Ed read it. I'm going to read it out of the New Living. Every version has just a little uh, different twist on this. I memorized it, of course, King James, just because that's all I had for years and years. But uh, 2 Timothy 2.15 in the New Living says, Work hard. I think Brother Ed says, be diligent. Work hard so you can present yourselves to God and receive his approval. Be a good worker, one who does not need to be ashamed and who correctly explains the word of truth. Uh, uh, Brother Ed said, handles the word of truth. <coughs> But that word rightly, uh, correctly explains uh, King James, rightly divides the word of truth. I want us to, to kind of concentrate on the second part of this, uh, Second Timothy 2.15, where he says, Be a good worker, one who does not need to be ashamed, and who correctly explains or rightly divides the word of truth. Um, that word is just... It's like dissects. It really means, it really means rightly. Like perpendicularly right. That's really what it means. Rightly, it's a compound word of rightly, like perpendicular. And with one swipe, a, a fast cut, clean cut. A right cut. Rightly divides, rightly dissects. We, we, by implication, means to expound, rightly expound it, correctly, or perfectly horizontal. Use all that words, that word rightly is very geometric, perpendicular, horizontal. It really talks about things that way. <clears throat> so that's what I want us to talk about how today, how we rightly divide how we correctly and 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 understand it's a, a process we need to learn okay so how first when we're getting read ready to read the bible we should do it firstly reverently reverently is your first blank in your bulletin reverently under one. One of the things we need to remember, kind of piggybacking backing on two weeks ago, this is God's message to us. These are God's words to us. In John chapter 5, verse 39, Jesus said this, to the Pharisees. He says, You search the scriptures because you think they give you eternal life. I think there's people today that would say that. But the scriptures point to me. When we're reading this message, it's God's message to us to point us to Christ. We need to approach that reverently. This isn't just history. This isn't just literature. This points to Christ. We should approach it reverently. Hebrews 4.12 says that this word is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword. It is a uh, sword cutting between soul and spirit. Between joint and marrow, it exposes our innermost thoughts and desires. You ready for that? Go toward it reverently. Psalm 
So that means in John chapter 16, when Jesus is telling us about the persecution we're about to face, they were about to face, the persecution we'll face as Christians, he says this in verse 13, when the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. He will not speak on his own, but will tell you what he has heard. He will tell you about the future. He will bring me glory by telling you whatever he receives from me. All that belongs to the Father is mine. This is why I said the Spirit will tell you whatever he receives from me. This word has to be approached reverently in the Spirit of God. So as you get ready to read the word, which I encourage you to do, read it like a message from God, pray for the Spirit to guide you into all truth. These are spiritual words. This is a message from God leading you to Christ. So <clears throat> the next two points, points two and three, are um, kind of in general too. Reverently was kind of in general. We should approach it reverently. But second, we should do it individually. We should approach God's word. We should read God's word individually. Um, I just laid, <laughs> there are hundreds, literally hundreds of verses I could have used for this. And I tried to pick one out of the Old Testament, one out of the New Testament. Both of them very um, well known. Psalm 119 verse 15 says, I will study your commandments. Not we will. I will study your commandments and reflect on your ways. I will delight in your decrees and not forget your word. I will do that. In our opening text that Brother Ed read us, what I just got done ready, it says, you study, you work hard to be uh, to show yourselves approved of God. Not you, church, you individually work hard. <laughs> See, it's your my boy. It is my responsibility to do to teach you to the best of my ability. It's your responsibility to learn. You as individuals must read that word. You cannot get what you need for yourself by sitting and listening only corporately to the word. You have to interact with it individually. You must read the word. So that gets to number three. Not only reverently, number one, two, individually, but three, <laughs> corporately. I'm not saying that we shouldn't hear the word corporately. We shouldn't have the word read corporately. I think it's very necessary for us to do that. Hebrews 10.25 says that we should um, not forsake the assembling together as some are in the habit of doing, but to encourage one another, even more as the day approaches. There is a, an encouragement to meet together. In 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 26, that's Paul summing up everything he said in chapters 12, 13, and 14. He says, well, my brothers, let's summarize. That's how I knew it was a summary. When you meet together, not if... When you meet together, one will sing, another will teach, another will teach. What will they teach? The word, corporately. It's necessary for our growth. 
When we read the Bible, we should do it together. But we need to do it as individuals. And we should always do it together or separately, reverently. So I almost did individually and corporately first, and then reverently second, because really, reverently applies to you as individuals and to us as a church. Now, is reverently um, the way we act and the way we, um, does that make it more reverent? Okay, okay. Let's quit beating around the bush. You know I will always, if I have it, come to this word, or to this with a suit coat and jacket on, or suit jacket and tie. The only reason, only reason, that's me personally. But when I approach this word, I'm going to give it the most respect I can. But can I be in a suit and tie and treat it disrespectfully? Yeah. So this has nothing to do necessarily with reverence. Do you understand what I'm saying? But that's just me. That's my thing to treat this reverently. When we read the word at the beginning of service, we all stand. Would we, is, that's just a showing of reverence corporately. Now, can we be un- reverent by standing also could we sit and be reverent yes so i'm not trying to say you must wear a tie and you must stand when the word is being read however the reason we stand is an attitude it's just our way of showing reverence to the word corporately this is my way to show reverence to the word corporately i'm not saying you have to do what I'm doing. And I'm not saying people who come and preach that don't wear this are not reverent. I'm not saying that. This is just my thing. I'm not doing it for a fashion show. I'm to show reverence to the word. Because when we're together corporately, I want it to be reverently as well as when I am individually. I don't get dressed up to read my Bible at home but I can still be reverent there. Ay, 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 that's a whole nother sermon. I already got that. <laughs> so, reverently in general, individually and corporately. So the next three things we're going to get through apply both individually and corporately. Okay? The next three things I'm going to say. So we've talked about reverently, we've talked about individually, we've talked about corporately. The fourth way we should read our Bibles, how to read our Bibles, is consistently. Psalm 1-2, we read this um, two weeks ago. Psalm uh, chapter 1 verse 2 says, But they delight in the law of the Lord, meditating on it day and night. It shows consistency. Psalm 5, 3. Oh Lord, ah, I almost can't say this without singing it. Oh Lord, hear me. Uh, so it's King James Version. Give ear to my words, O oh Lord. Consider my meditation. Hearken unto the voice of my cry, my King and my God. For unto thee will I pray. My voice shall thou hear in the mornings. O Lord, in the morning, when I direct my prayer unto thee and will look up. Every morning I will look to you. The New Living says, listen to my voice in the morning, Lord. Each morning I will bring my request to you and wait expectantly it's consistency now for years and years and years we were taught it took 21 days to form a habit right so that I don't know now new studies are saying 66 days 
are required to form a habit. Some say you need to do the 2190 rule. 21 days, do it nonstop, and then 90, kind of put it into practice. If you miss one day in those 90s, it's okay, but really work to keep that as a habit. And once those 90 days are up, man, it's in your, it's a habit for you. Um, one study said anywhere from 18 days to 254 days. Well, that's eight months, that's a year. The thing is, consistency takes consistency. Now, I don't know if you remember what I said about steps four, five, and six. But I said steps four, five, and six apply to steps two and three. You need to be consistent individually and corporately when you read the word. So when we get together corporately, we need to be consistent about reading this word. Number five, methodically. Number five is methodically. Don't forget what 2 Timothy, what Paul tells us in 2 Timothy 3, 16. He says, all scripture is inspired by God. All scripture is God-breathed and is useful to teach us what is true and to make us realize what is wrong in our lives. It corrects us when we are wrong and teaches us to do what is right. Even numbers. Even Habakkuk. Even Philemon. Even Nehemiah. All of those things. You know why? If we've read the whole word, we know what happens in this. Here I raise mine Ebenezer. Ebenezer, isn't he in Scrooge? What is the Ebenezer? Right here, they give you a hint. First Samuel, Samuel 7, 12. A stone commemorating God's deliverance of his people. Literally, it means a stone of faith. They set a stone. They called it Ebenezer. When God showed his faithfulness, we need to know all the scriptures. That's why you need a method, not this. What am I going to read today? Oh, okay. What am I going to read tomorrow? Oh, oh, nothing. It closed. I'll just skip today. That is sporadically. We need to be methodically approaching the word of God. Get to front to back beginning to end, so we can read it all. We need to read all the scripture, because it's all God-breathed, and all of it is worthy to teach us what is wrong and right. And then we can sing that song, and instead of thinking of Scrooge and the, the ghost of Christmas past, we can know what Raising my Ebenezer means. He did when he wrote it. That's the importance of being methodical in your approach. Individually and corporately. You need to get through the entire word. So get ready for a series on numbers. But with that idea of methodical reading, reading it methodically, having a, a method of reading, 
I, I called up a little video I want you to watch, okay? So, um, Don, this is where I'm going to have you. Hopefully it's still up. I really liked this. It, again, um, I've had several things come across my desk that have uh, really just hit points that I was doing anyway, but just in a different media, different way. So let's watch this little clip, How to Read the Bible. Did you know that for just about every passage of Scripture, there are literally thousands of interpretive choices? For example, if you asked a thousand people to comment on a particular Bible passage, you'd likely get a lot of different answers. But think about how the answers might differ if you asked people from other parts of the world or from other time periods. Yet for each passage of Scripture, there is still one interpretation that's better than the others. So how can we know if we're reading and interpreting the Bible correctly? Well, first, engage the text. Read and reread the Bible for the rest of your life. Keep engaging the text even when you don't quite understand what's going on. It may take time, but stick with it. And as you're reading, be sure to seek out the help of others, particularly those who've made the study of the Bible their life's calling. The most important place to engage the text with others on a regular basis is during the weekly sermon by a trained pastor. Weigh his words carefully, and as with visits to the doctor, sometimes it may become necessary to get a second opinion. Second, avoid thinking that the view you were raised with is somehow closest to the truth. The fact is everyone is likely to think this way because we've all grown accustomed to the views we received in childhood, so they're comfortable to us. Rather than assuming that your particular church or denomination has all right answers, think through the answers that you've been given to see if they're consistent with the Bible's overall message. Third, challenge yourself to become familiar with the views of Christians from other times and places. None of us comes to the Bible with a blank slate. Consciously or subconsciously, we've all been influenced by the views of others. So it's best to at least be aware of what those influences are. Being confronted with interpretations other than your own can also help you to see the Bible in an entirely new light and can also challenge you to think through the beliefs of your own tradition that you may have taken for granted. Fourth, don't ask, what does this mean to me, until you've asked, what did this mean to the original readers or hearers? To put it succinctly, the text can often mean many things to many different people, but the important thing is to discover what the words actually meant in their original historical context. Finally, don't read the Bible as if it's primarily a collection of rules and regulations for your self-improvement project. In John 5:39, Jesus told the religious leaders of his day, you seek the scriptures thinking that in them you have life, but these scriptures testify about me. Sometimes it's not easy to figure out the meaning or purpose of a given biblical passage. But as with working on a puzzle, it's easier to figure out the individual pieces when you look at the box top. Once we understand that Christ and the unfolding drama of redemption is that box top, that that's the heart of the biblical message, then and only then can we learn what it means to live a life worthy of his calling and to do this out of sheer gratitude for all that we've been given. So, one, engage the text often and with others. Two, don't assume that you already have all the right answers. Three, expose yourself to the views of Christians from other times and places. Four, focus on the meaning of the text in its original context. And finally, don't forget to look at the box stop. Remember that the Bible isn't chiefly about you, but Christ. I'm Mike Horton for the White Horse Inn. So that idea of methodical, in-depth study, not just a surface read, which I think is important to read it like a letter, like a message from God, but then stop and engage the text. Take it deeper. Spend time with it. Ask other people what they think it means, how you think it means. Do that methodically, methodically with all the scriptures.
both individually and corporately. If a church doesn't engage in that, that's another message. And then last, how should you read the Bible? Deeply. And that's what I meant. That kind of goes with what we just watched. Really, in our opening text, um, Brother Ed says, be diligent. Um, the New Living says, work hard. The King James says, study to show yourselves approved of God. That idea is to, it really means to use speed to make an effort, be earnest, to study. It's going to take time. It can't just be uh, a passing thought. Now, should it be in your passing thoughts? Amen. But as anything else in life that's worth anything, it takes your effort. It will take effort. I'm reminded of the Bereans in Acts 17, 11, that took what was said, received it with gladness, but then took it to the scriptures daily to see if what was being said is true. That takes time. That's why I give you these so that we don't have time here for you to take this to the scriptures daily because we are here one day. But Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday, is he full of baloney? What is he saying? Is it really biblical? Because you individually have to be taking it deeply and then we corporately must dig into things besides you know God loves you so much he doesn't want you poor I like when that little clip says it's not the Bible is not some self-improvement project it's not for our self-improvement project that's not what it was written for and we shouldn't approach it as a self improvement project it leads us to the only way we have back to God Christ Jesus it is everything for us we have to go deeply with it amen all right so with that I'm going to invite the musicians and sing singer to come and we're going to close with a little chorus that we sang last week based in Psalm 119 thy word <clears throat> so we're going to sing thy word it's just the chorus of a song that is much longer, but it, this literally is the scripture set to um, a tune.
let us soak in and let us consider how we can be more uh, reverent, more consistent, more methodical, more how we can approach your word more deeply, Lord, as we read your word. Let us do that individually and let us do that as we gather together every week. Lord, let us really let your word be a light unto our feet, a, a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. You are dismissed.